Hi, I'm Carlos Cavazzo for Starlix, and today I'll be playing a number of my licks and solos and demonstrating some of the different techniques that I use. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my equipment. I'd like to start with this guitar that I'm holding right here. It's an early 60s Gibson Les Paul Jr. And I have a uh, DiMarzio Super 2 pickup in there right now. Sometimes I have some custom wound ones from the factory, but this one in particular is a stock Super 2 that comes from the, any music store that you might shop at. And it has a rosewood fingerboard with shallower tuning pegs. And I tend to like this guitar a lot because it has a lot of access to the higher frets for leads. And the tension on the strings is, is real light rather than some guitars is harder to bend. This one tends to be a little easy to bend. Uh, it's got one pickup only, so you only have one sound and uh, tone control if you want to have a bassy tone. And um, that's about it. The next guitar I'd like to talk about is the Red Jackson Flying V over here. And uh, it's custom made by uh, Grover Jackson. It has a Floyd Rose Trimlo system and also has DiMarzio pickups in it. And uh, that particular lead position pickup was custom wound by the factory. It has been wound to give a little more upper mid and a better low sound. And it's uh, also a rosewood fingerboard. And it's got two pickups, so you can have two different sounds if you like. I prefer the treble pickup all the time, basically. The next guitar here is a Gibson Les Paul Gold Top, which is actually a reissue of the original, which was, uh, I think, first made in 1952. And this guitar here is a 30th year anniversary, which they tried to use the same wood, same design. And uh, when I got that particular guitar, I left the stock pickup in there because it sounded so good I didn't want to change it because uh, as soon as I plugged in I just hit a couple chords and it sounded, sounded great. The last guitar here is a uh, early 70's cream colored Gibson Flying V which uh, was a custom uh, edition I believe because it has the block inlay. Most of them have dot inlay. This is the square block inlay. It's also a rosewood fingerboard and it has two custom DiMarzio pickups, custom wound for me by uh, the people at the factory, which gives me a boost in the upper middle and the low end. Uh, it's got two pickups also, and basically the parts are Gibson parts. The amplification that I use is three Marshall stacks with four heads. Uh, the cabinets that I use have uh, all selections except for one cabinet that has Altec speakers in it to give me more brightness and clarity. The heads that I have are uh, three 100 watt heads and one 50 watt head which are all old early 70s vintage heads which sound the best to me. Uh, they have no master volume just volume one, volume two and usually in a live concert I just crank them all in ten. Uh, the tubes that I use are EL34 tubes which the insides has to be modified a little bit to handle the, the power of those tubes. And uh, Jose Ardano does my modifications. He's located in California. The effects that I use is as follows. I have two Nady 700 uh, wireless systems run into a AB box. I have one frequency. I have two different frequencies on my wireless systems. One frequency on channel A and one frequency on channel B. I use the wireless systems because some of the stages that we play are so big it's hard to use a chord and still run around with the rest of the guys in the group on, to perform for the people on stage. So uh, actually wireless systems for this band is a must. I really haven't used the wireless systems for too much recording, uh, though I have in the past. Uh, you can get a good sound with them. It's, with the Pro 700 models, it's, the tone is basically the same, a little more high end because you get a little more white noise into your sound with, those, with the wireless systems. I use two different frequencies uh, because it's a lot easier to make guitar changes with the AB box. You just go straight from frequency A and hit the button and you can go straight to frequency B. So some of my guitars are on one frequency and some of the guitars are on another frequency. Um, therefore I can uh, make guitar changes a lot quicker and a lot easier. The AB box then runs into the distortion box which I like to use a lot of distortion because it gives me a little edge on my lead. The rhythm tone is basically the same but the lead tone it gives you a little trebly edge to it and more sustain. 
and then the distortion box runs into a 10 band MXR equalizer which I've been using for a long time which I boost my upper middle because it gives you a little more bite and a little more sustain I think and uh, it's, it's a better sound for heavy metal music and then the equalizer goes into the 1500 MXR delay which I tend to use a a fast slap for a lot of things you know sort of a dun dun you know just real fast slap it get, kind of doubles your sound a little bit and it sounds good for a three-piece group with just bass drums and guitar and then the delay runs into the SDE 3000 Roland which I use that for flanging and chorusing effect and then the Roland goes into the blasto flex here <laughs> well actually uh, my guitar technician Jerry Snyder got crazy with a couple stick-on letters and stuck it on there it's actually a MXR pitch transposer which I use to double the sound also I use it for certain chords and it, it's like a harmonizer this is how the pitch transposer or harmonizer will change your sound it gives you a doubling effect um, what it does actually is knock uh, your guitar out of tune or sharp or flat depending on how you uh, set it and it gives it a doubling effect like this this is without it <laughs> Here is the effect um, when I switch it on. The first chord I'll hit will be with that, and I'll switch it on during the chord so you can hear the difference. As you can see, it kind of gives you a doubling effect and uh, a eerie sound, strange eerie sound it gives you. And the way I have it all hooked up is I have one stack dry, no effects, just distortion and equalizer. And then on the other side I have uh, one stack that's wet. I have uh, the chorusing, the flanging, the harmonizer, the delay, and uh, any other effect that I use. And all that is all hooked into a stereo noise gate, which I have one side, the dry side, uh, gated then I have the wet side also gated. The type of noise gate that I use is a Hush 2C made by Rocktron which is a new device uh, just out on the market. The type of distortion that I use is uh, called Zeus. I also use a Boss heavy metal pedal which sometimes I will use the heavy metal pedal but most of the time I use a Zeus. I prefer that sound. Next we go to the pedal board here. I have a MXR preset selector which uh, works the pitch transposer. I have uh, four presets on the pitch transposer like one sound which will be 99 and the other sound which will be 1.01 .01, and then the other sound will be 1.00. The sound I prefer is 1.00 bordering on 1.01 .01, which is a good balance right there. The last piece right here is was custom made for me by EMB Audio, which is a foot switching system for my effects like the chorusing and flanging. It's got eight presets, so I have a, a mild chorus on one and a real strong chorus signal on the other preset. Then I can have a, a mild flanging sound and on one, and then another one I can have a real strong flanging sound, so I can have my choice. It's got a bypass switch and also the switch right here is uh, my delay on off switch which they custom built for me incidentally the type of strings that I use are 9 gauge which are Dean Markley strings a Magnum series uh, I've been using those a lot on the tour and they seem to work great for me and I also use medium picks before we get started let's tune up here's the low E
and high E. By the way, the pitch that we're tuned to right now is slightly higher than uh, the Mental Health and Condition Critical albums. We tend to tune a little lower because it sounds a little heavier and also it saves the vocals um, when you're touring, you know, seven, playing seven nights a week. It's a little hard on uh, strain on your vocals, so we tune just slightly, slightly bit lower. Now, if you'll take a look at your Starlix manual, we'll begin with lick number one. First of all, the lead solo in this song was broken down into three different keys. The first key being B, and then D, and then E. And the first lick in the key of B was sort of like a pentatonic scale with a little bit of blues influence added to it. And the second part of the solo incorporates a different style. What I do is I do a hammering technique with the pick, which has been done before. It's uh, with the left hand, um, just a little hammering technique. And with my right hand, I'm hammering with the pick, so it sounds like this. And the third and final part of the solo uh, is in the key of E, and it has incorporates a fluttering on the pick, on the picking hand, rather, and uh, it goes something like this. And the scale on that last part is. Uh, goes down a fifth and then down a sharp fifth so it goes like this and the second part would be a diminished uh, descend and the final part would also be diminished and now I'll take you through the whole thing slowly And this is lick number two. This solo is in the key of G, and the fast part would be a major pentatonic scale. It goes something like this. Also, with my right hand, I mute a lot and make it real staccato, which you rest your uh, back part of your palm onto just the beginning of the strings right there, and it gives you a muffling sound, like... Okay, here's the whole lick, slowly. This is lick number three, a song called Breathless.
I'm going to break this lick up for you here. The first part, would, the chord would be a B minor 7th. And the lead goes something like this. And then the next chord would be a E. And the lead would be like this. And that ends up on an F sharp. The next part here uh, is in this uh, B minor 7th again. And the picking is uh, sort of like a Jimi Hendrix type style of picking, which is it kind of flutters and stops and flutters and stops. So it goes something like this. The final section, uh, the, the lick starts in the key of E and ends up in F sharp. Goes something like this. And now the whole thing slowly goes something like this. And this is lick number four, Run for Cover. At the starting of this lick, I get a squeal sound with my pick, which a lot of people do these days in heavy metal, which is what you do is choke your pickup small, you know, short at the tip, like this, and then kind of hit it at the edge, and you could, like... And by moving the pick around in different sections of the string, you can get a different pitch of the squeal, like a high one or a low. Also, to do that type of a th squeal, you have to have a real distorted sound. You cannot do that with a clean sound. Uh, it can be done with a clean sound, but it will not have the attack and the gain that it has with the distortion. <laughs> Uh, basically, the higher part of this uh, solo, uh, it's uh, high notes using a, a sharp fifth, which should sound like this. And uh, I kind of had the idea of like a like an English cop car, you know, you know, when it goes by on the streets, you hear that sound. It's kind of like, like the siren sound, I guess. The last part of that solo is sort of an answer to uh, the first diminished thing that part, it, which is a uh, sort of diminished intervals, it goes like this. By the way, on the Metal Health album, I uh, used a tremolo bar to lower the pitch of the diminished notes. Instead of going like this, I lowered the bar while simultaneously while doing this. With my uh, three fingers here, I'd be lowering the bar slowly to lower the pitch. But live, if I use a guitar with no, uh, without a terminal unit, I will just go down the scale like I told you earlier. And here's the whole solo slowly, and I start the solo with a slide down the G string. <laughs> Alright, for this next lick, I'll be switching to the Jackson Flying V. Just give me a second here. Okay.
This uh, battle axe look is made up of uh, arpeggios, and arpeggio is uh, the playing of a chord note by note. So uh, a major arpeggio, uh, a major chord, oh, it would be played like this in an arpeggio. And the chord progression of uh, this particular lick is as follows. Uh, starts out with an A major chord, then goes to an E, and then goes to an A major seventh, to a D minor, to a G major, C major, F. E, A sharp, A, and also on the A sharp chord I hit my toggle switch with my rhythm pickup volume off so you get a uh, 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 uh type effect, something like this. Here's the whole lick played slowly. This is lick number six from Let's Get Crazy. First of all, this lick starts out with sort of a, a flamenco type scale and uh, ends up with uh, some tremolo effects which I do with the um, on the, in the key of E it goes like this and what I'm doing at the end there is uh, again like I explained earlier uh, to get that harmonic uh, sound you kind of have your pick like an angle against the strings to so slice it like a knife and you're kind of going that's just a little effect I, uh, you know, did in the studio there. And now here's lick number six, played slowly. Okay, now we're at lick number seven, Thunderbird, and I'm going to change back to the Gibson Les Paul Jr. for this. Lick number seven, Thunderbird, is uh, in the key of A minor, which is sort of like a Spanish-type feel to that, almost like a flamenco-type scale. And uh, slowly it goes like this. Uh, this is lick number eight, a song called Sign of the Times off the Condition Critical album. It goes like this.
Lick number eight uh, is in the key of A major, and uh, what I'm doing there is uh, building layers of, of notes to where I start a scale off, end on a lower note, then the second part of the scale goes to an even a higher part of the scale, then the third final part goes to do the highest part of the scale, and then I end up with some more melodic slow playing to add a different feel there. The first part is like this. The second part would be third part on the final note I, I like to put a, a slow vibrato um, to give it a good feel uh, something like this and you could also do vibrato fast also like the next lick number nine is stomp your hands clap your feet goes like this Uh, this lick is in the key of A major and it starts off with a sort of like a pentatonic scale, uh, I guess you would call it, and ends up on a, a trill ascending up the neck diminished mode, which would be slowly like this. And the final lick is uh, sort of going down a scale with a twangy type tone. I'm, I'm kind of getting that pick squeal along with muffling the notes. So it goes something like this. Now here's the lick played slowly. This is lick number 10, uh, Red Alert, which I used a slide on the lead in this, this song, which is just like a little metal bar you can get at your local music store. And some people will wear it on different fingers. I prefer my, my uh, ring finger, so there I, I got a, a one that fits my ring finger comfortably. Some of them are come bigger if you want to wear them on these other fingers. Got it stuck there. Um, the, the idea for the slide lead is to just sort of glide the slide over the top of the strings and not actually press the fret as you would in a normal playing. So it'd be like, you know, like... <laughs> like that, you just kind of glide it along and, and hit the... You want to hit on the, on the edge of the fret, like let's say you want to hit a, a D chord. You would hit the edge right on the top of the fret. <laughs> rather than hitting right in the middle of the fret like your finger would. So uh, this is lick number 10, um, red alert. Now I'm going to play this lick for you slowly, and one thing you have to keep in mind when you're playing a slide is you, you have to muffle with your right hand, and you can also muffle with your left hand, so these two fingers that you're not using, so when you're going down scales or up scales, you won't accidentally hit strings that shouldn't be sounding off. So it would be like, like this. You know? So you, you'll bypass the strings you don't want to hit. And with a combination of both hands, you should be able to muffle the ones you don't want to hit. Here it is slowly. And to get vibrato with the slide, what you do is just shake your wrist uh, side by side like that. So you get an effect like this. This would be without the vibrato. 
And with the vibrato. <laughs> This is lick number 11, uh, which is still red alert. And uh, as soon as I take the slide off, just play it like this. This lick is uh, in the key of G, and it's like a Dorian mode. And I'm actually playing all those notes on two strings with three different finger patterns. So it would go like this. The picking would go that yeah, a fluttering type effect. And you want to start with uh, the first part would go and the second part you move up to uh, like two frets and do the same thing with the middle finger going to a minor note. And the last and final part is uh, sort of like a, a three fret spread with your fingers, which you go. Then ending on the high, high note. Bear in mind that the pick is constantly fluttering while you're doing those patterns to make it work. And here's the whole thing slowly. This is lick number 12 uh, from a song called Bad Boy. This lick is sort of what you call a pedal tone. It's when you're uh, playing a certain group of notes and at the same time dropping a certain note uh, you know, a few beats at a time, and it gives it a weird effect. It's slowly goes something like this. And the rest of the lick is uh, just descends into like a minor, E minor type scale, which goes like this. The whole thing slowly goes like this. This is lick number 13, Born to Rock. This look starts in the key of E minor and uh, starts off with a pentatonic type scale, just uh, ascending up to the G string, and then goes to a D major type uh, riff, which is like a trill, I guess you would call it, and then uh, ending with a sort of a major type scale going down, ending on the E note. Here it is, played slow. <laughs> This is lick number 14, the second half of Born to Rock. That lick uh, starts out with uh, sort of a, a, a triad arpeggio, which is like three notes. Uh, just goes down three notes. Then uh, starts in the key of uh, E, then goes to D, 
and uh, ends up with a high note, which I overstretched to get an even higher still note, you know, and uh, ends up with sort of a, a down ascending scale, on it, like a pentatonic scale, I guess, uh, just descending down to the um, E chord, uh, and slowly it will go like this. This is lick number 15, uh, Mama, We're All Crazy Now, and if you hold on a second, I'm going to change guitars for this. This lick uh, starts out in the key of C, actually it's a mixolydian mode, uh, the scale, and it uh, builds up into a high note, which then uh, does a few, just a few little notes, nothing real fast, and it ends up on a high, you know, singing note, which is like, and sustains, and slowly it would go like this. This is lick number 16, which is the uh, second half of uh, lick number 15, and it would go like this. First of all, this lick consists of a number of things. It starts off in the key of F major and ascends up to uh, a high note. And then I do a pull-off thing uh, with uh, two fingers. And then it goes into an octave uh, lead, uh, which is used a lot with jazz players. And uh, Jimmy Hendrix used to do it a lot, where you hit notes with octaves. <laughs> And then I end off with a, just a high note going up that Mixolydian scale again in the key of uh, C. And uh, slowly it would go like this. This is lick number 17, Slick Black Cadillac. First of all, this uh, lick is played in the key of D and then switches to the key of G, which I play only with two fingers, the pinky finger and the ring finger, and uh, it's a triad note, it's actually. Um, my right hand picking technique is uh, alternating between the B string to the, to the G, uh, G string, back to the B, then to the E string, and uh, together it would be... Also, I use my right hand uh, to muffle the strings to give it a staccato feel, and slowly it would go like this. <laughs>
Okay, for lick number 18, I'm going to show you a few exercises that I sometimes do to uh, get in shape and uh, to keep in shape. Uh, the first one is uh, to help synchronize your picking and your playing hand. And what you do is uh, start on your A flat note right here. And what you want to do is with your first, second, and fourth finger, just alternate up and down the strings as follows. And w the whole time you want to try to do it slowly, then increase your speed each time and not miss any notes and keep your picking hand synchronized real tight with your left, you know, your playing hand. And also you can move up to, to the A note and spread your fingers three frets apart and do it like this. <laughs> And at the same time, you could also use fingers one, three, and four. Also, uh, to increase power in your left hand, you can also hammer the notes. Uh, with the two fret spread and the three fret spread, uh, like this. And then also with fingers one, three, and four, do the same thing. Bear in mind that when you're uh, practicing these exercises, to try to start off slowly like, and increase your speed, and the whole time you want to keep each note audible and clear, you know, clear, so you understand what you're playing. And also, uh, you can uh, get creative and and do pull-offs instead of hammer-ons, which would be like. Um, So uh, during that exercise, I'm only picking once, and I'm pulling off the other notes, sounding them off with, with this finger and that finger. Right now, for licks 19 and 20, we're going to go to some rhythm tracks. I won't be playing those slowly, but uh, they are in your accompanying manual. And then we'll be returning to, I'll show you some uh, two-handed uh, tapping techniques. First of all, this solo is in the key of D-flat. And the lead that I play starts out with a B note, which I, I play around an E formation, like... And then I ascend up into a, a D-flat pentatonic scale. I just play certain licks throughout that pentatonic scale and add little tricks, little frills here and there. This is number 20. Okay, uh, now I'm going to show you a few variations on the two-hand uh, tapping technique. First of all, you want to hold your pick in your finger like that, if you can see that. And here's uh, one way of doing it, which is the most common way. What I'm doing is pulling up with my first finger, and uh, it sounds off the note with a pull, you know, by pulling it. Uh, 
Also, another way of uh, doing this is by tapping your first finger more than the rest of the fingers are tapping. So you get a sound like this. Here's another way to play it uh, by using your middle finger and your pinky finger and both your first fingers. It would be something like this. And here's still uh, another version of uh, playing that type of thing uh, with the open open note. Uh, you can add an open note in there like this. Also bear in mind when you're doing uh, this two-handed technique, the other strings that you're not hitting, you can muffle with a combination of this hand and a combination of your palm right here, just kind of rest it on the strings. You kind of muffle the other ones that you're not going to hit, just to keep them from sounding off. Well, I've enjoyed sharing this information with you. I hope you'll find many of these ideas helpful in your expanding your own playing. And remember, don't become discouraged because everybody has a chance to become successful in the music industry. Just uh, keep practicing and try all you can, and best of luck to you.